ABC, it's Dr. Robert, uh, just checking in. And um, I had an, in, an idea for a short video today that I wanted to create and put online. So uh, I think uh, I've talked in other videos and uh, folks may well not be aware, but I use a glass audio desk uh, record cleaner uh, and have for probably oh, more than eight years. Um, and I've, uh, you know, I've had, I've, I've worn a couple out. So I had the first one I bought, um, which cost me $4,000. They're not cheap back in the day. Um, I cleaned 4,000 records on it and uh, was happy with that. And then it uh, went south and I called the place I bought it from and they were willing to exchange it for, you know, they were willing to either repair it or exchange it uh, for a new one for a, for a much cheaper price of $1,500. And I appreciated that and took the exchange. And the, on the second one I had, I cleaned 5,000 records. And then a similar thing happened. It just, the, the motor seems to go out and called the place again, was able to replace it again. Uh, and uh, this time for like 1700, I wanna say, because uh, the price had gone up slightly. So was happy with that one, but it went south after only about, uh, you know, uh, like 300, 400 records very early. And they uh, replaced that one yet again. And so now I've had the one I have now, which was a free replacement under warranty for that third machine. And it's been working well now. And I think I've cleaned probably a couple of thousand records with it, something like that. Um, interesting thing about it, it is advertised as being an ultrasonic machine. And uh, Michael Fremer, if I can call him out, has suggested that it is not. Uh, and I just thought that was wrong. I thought that was incorrect. Um, and then I was down at the in-groove in, in Phoenix uh, talking to Mike, the owner, and he used to sell these things and, and rep them. And he has since uh, kind of moved away from that. And he said that all of the ones that he sold ended up needing a repair, which is consistent with my experience, even though I haven't really regarded it as too bad of a hardship, but all things being equal, I would wish it would last. But the other thing he said is he agrees with with uh, Michael Fremer that it is not an ultrasonic machine. So I am going to do what's called the tin foil test on my machine today, uh, which is just to insert tin foil down into the ultrasonic uh, fluid bath and run the cleaning uh, process uh, and I'm going to do it for a full five minutes the online instructions say you just need a minute but supposedly if it is a an ultrasonic uh, device it will create cavitation and uh, holes actually in tinfoil so uh, I find that kind of interesting the fact that it'd be so destructive to tinfoil and not to uh, a vinyl LP uh, and yet, um, it's a valid test, and there are ultrasonic cleaning machines that do generate cavitation on the market, some of them uh, quite inexpensive, such as the Humming Guru claims to be ultrasonic, and uh, I have heard uh, that that is in fact true. So let me see what happens with this one, with the tinfoil. That's going to be the conclusion of the video. I'm going to do one short setup piece. And then I'll come back uh, after the cleaning and inspect the tinfoil with you. So hang tight. All right, VC. Uh, we're gonna test this uh, record cleaner today to see if it is truly ultrasonic. So this is the Audio Desk Sistema glass uh, record cleaner. This is their website right here. And you can read that green line, fully automatic ultrasonic cleaning and easily, easiest handling, the Vinyl Cleaner Pro X. And I'll show one further thing. Here's their um, you know, manual, instruction manual. And when you turn to page uh, 22 uh, in English, it, it says the Vinyl Cleaner Pro is an extremely easy to use record cleaning machine with a fully automated and gentle wet cleaning process that is based on an ultrasonic bath 
uh, etc. So they do make the claim that this is an ultrasonic device and that's been brought under question, into question. And I'm gonna see if we can do a, um, uh, a legitimate valid uh, test of that. So off we go. All right, so this is the glass audio desk Systema, I think is how it's uh, pronounced. It's a German manufacturer and it's about the dimensions of, you know, two thirds of a vinyl record. So let me insert the tinfoil, which I've got over here, uh, into the uh, vinyl cleaner. And I'll show you what that looks like before I turn it on. Okay, there's the tin foil inserted down into the uh, cleaning compartment um, uh, all the way across. And I've left this tail out to support it. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine on. In two, three, four, five minutes of cleaning. It's filling up with water and it's gonna start momentarily yeah it doesn't necessarily like you know, it's not moving these um, so i think it senses there's no record but no oh, no there it goes spoke too soon all right we'll be back in five minutes and inspect the tin foil okay here's the big reveal uh, i hope you're sitting down i am because you know i'm on pins and needles here um, so this was well exposed to the water, and there's absolutely no um, disintegration. Well, oh wait, can I just... But now I'm wondering if those holes, there are some holes in it. But now I'm wondering if those holes, oh boy, they're kind of everywhere. I tell you what, I'm gonna get a fresh piece. Okay, um, you know, if your wife is like mine, uh, they tend to save things. Mine tends to save things uh, to reuse, uh, including tin foil. So I made it an error in judgment and put a wrinkled piece of tin foil that was in our cupboard that had been used in some context uh, in the machine for the test. And it did emerge with holes. It did. So I'll show that if. Well, I'm, what, what I've decided to do is get a fresh piece, totally fresh, and so this is take two. Hey, it's science, baby. You repeat, you repeat until you're confident in your results. So here's our second run. All right, VC, uh, anybody who's still watching, thank you for your patience with my uh, compulsive adherence to scientific method. Yeah, and um, uh done now second cycle and i have pulled this out it's still a little wet but i will say it does not appear to be to be weathered in any form there are no holes in this one i'm still dripping on myself here but, ah yeah there's that's a brand new piece of tin foil. And I'm trying to look through any minor holes and there just aren't any. And the outside, which is what, this side rather, which is, I don't think there is an outside. This side, which is the one that was exposed to the liquid bath is, is not pitted. It's shiny and not worn at all. So if this is a legitimate test, and you can look it up online. It's the tinfoil test for ultrasound. It's out there. Uh, this just failed that test. So I think I would challenge the glass audio desk manufacturers and, uh, and representatives, sales reps, uh, to verify whether or not this is ultrasonic. And if it is not ultrasonic, it should not be advertised as such, I think that's only reasonable. So we'll be talking more about this. I'm gonna be talking more about this with colleagues and friends in other videos, um, but uh, this is kind of a first 
round from my own. And I, you know, I have no conflict of interest with one way or the other with respect to the glass audio desk uh, um, record cleaner. I will say I have been happy with the results. I mean, it does a nice job of cleaning records. Um, but now I'm wondering, could I find something that is, is even better? Maybe, and uh, certainly maybe cheaper. So um, with that, I'll turn it off today. And until next time, the doctor is out. <laughs>